All right, so let's not act like we're surprised here. Let's not act like this is brand new news that we didn't expect to come. Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares will step down. His contract is set to expire in early 2026, and he is stepping down. He's letting everybody know, I'm getting out of here. All right, so now we've lost our CEO of Stellantis. Stellantis, the parent company of Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Chrysler, right? Earlier this year, we lost Tim Koneskitz, who was the direct CEO of Dodge and Ram. He took off. He was the father of the Hellcat. And now we've lost the CEO of Stellantis. Where is Dodge going? Where's the Charger going? Where's the Challenger going? The only silver lining here is, let's be honest here, we're going to have a new president coming in uh, at the beginning of the year as well. And so that whole 2030, all cars being electric mess that we've been dealing with, I'm pretty sure that's getting tossed out the window. So with that being said, will we see the V8 Hemi again sooner rather than later? Let's talk about it. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Knockout360, here with another video, man. So you can tell I'm in a house that makes us a house vlog. You know, I going down and come around. Let's get into it. Car content, car shows, car reviews, car mates, anything and everything car related happens on this channel. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around. For everyone else, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out. So boom, I'm not even going to waste your time here. I want you to see it for yourself. First off, shout out to Mopar Insiders for the news, for the inside news. So boom, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares will retire in 2026, all right? Uh, let's see here. Stellantis CEO will step down. Official announcement is to be made by the automaker soon. So obviously Stellantis hasn't officially announced this, but apparently his ass is grass. Uh, Stellantis is preparing for a leadership shakeup as chief executive officer Carlos Tavares steps down amid profit challenges and declining sales in the United States. And by declining sales, we mean just that. Hold on, hold on. I got it right here for you. Yeah, so uh, Stellantis issuing a profit warning in September, a profit warning. Over the past 12 months, its shares have declined by 38% underscoring investors' concerns. So needless to say, Stellantis has been struggling. Dodge has been struggling. Uh, Jeep has been struggling. Ram has been struggling. Uh, I would say Chrysler has been struggling, but the only car that Chrysler has at this point is the Pacifica. They stopped making everything else. So I can't even say they're struggling because they were never up. They haven't been up since the Chrysler 300 was in production. You feel me? Um, so we've lost him and we lost Tim Koneskis. I know you uh, barely remember that name. The Godfather of the Hellcat retires beside the beloved V8. And you remember when he retired, that shit just came out of nowhere. Like nobody was expecting it. Nobody was hinting at it. It just happened. Your boy just retired. You know what I mean? Um, this one right here, a little bit of a forewarning. You know, he is stepping down. It looks like his contract is set to 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 end or expire in 2026. And he's going to be bouncing uh, probably at the end of 2025. But they have been looking for his successor. Uh, let's see here. All right, yeah, so boom. The search for a new CEO is already underway with Stellantis chairman John Elkin leading a special committee that will make the final decision. The company expects to select Tavares uh, replacement by the fourth quarter of 2025, ensuring a smooth transition of leadership. So he's gone, basically. He's already letting everybody know, I'm stepping down, I'm getting out of here. I fucked up, it didn't work, I'm getting out of here. You know, we're, we're so deep in a hole at this point, I don't foresee our, ourselves actually pulling ourselves out of it. You know what I mean? Uh, things got so bad in the past month here. Last month, tensions boiled over when Stellantis Dealer Advisory Group publicly criticized. Like, this is the dealer advisory group on behalf of all of your dealerships that you see in your cities and your states. Publicly criticized Tavares' leadership in an open letter calling for stronger measures to address the company's failing or falling sales in the U.S. market. Uh, Stellantis has responded by offering more aggressive incentives to buyers, which it says has already begun to yield positive results. So at the end of the day, what do consumers want? Affordable prices. We want good cars, reliable cars, nice looking cars, nice performing and nice sounding cars. But more than that, we want affordable cars. And that's the least that anybody could ask. And since they've been doing this new incentive stuff where they've been knocking cars off almost ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, people are actually responding, which lets you know what? We just want affordable cars. Now, let's keep it 100 here. Um, 
You know, like I know, we got a new president coming into the office in, in, in uh, 1st of January. And something tells me that his viewpoint and perspective on electrified automobiles is slightly different from Joe Biden, our current president. Something tells me that all of that, you know, electric cars by 2030 stuff that, you know, Joe Biden was pushing. Something tells me that all that shit's getting thrown out the window. There could be some hiccups because, you know, he's got Elon Musk right beside him. And obviously Elon Musk is a, the CEO of Tesla. But I still believe that uh, a lot of that, that you know, electric automobile mandate that, that Joe Biden was pushing by 2030 and 2035 and so on and so forth. I think a lot of that's getting thrown out because the reality of the situation is, from what I understand, a lot of these electric cars are not selling in this particular market. People still want internal combustion engines, uh, uh, V6s. V8s, V10s, V12s, diesel, people still want engines, you know, something that's reliable, something that they know they can put gas in their car in under five minutes, hop on the road and be on about their day. They don't have to worry about charging. They don't have to worry about their car catching on fire in their garage, which is videos that I've seen of Teslas. They don't have to worry about that shit. You know what I'm saying? People want internal combustion engines. So my thing is when, you know, um, uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump gets into the office, something tells me that he's going to repeal a whole lot of those electric uh, pushes in the automotive uh, in the automotive industry. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, Dodge was one of the first ones to jump, or Stellantis period, was one of the first ones to jump in head first with this whole electrified engine BS. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Everything has got e electrified engine written over it when it comes to Stellantis. And it's only going to get worse, um, you know, in the foreseeable future, especially with the 2025 Charger. There is no more Challenger. You already know that I'm preaching to the choir. But with the 2025 Charger, they're putting all their eggs in the, in the SRT Banshee basket, hoping that it will be a success. And I really don't think it is going to be because, number one, Number one, these cars are already too expensive. Are you still, am I still recording here? Hold on, let me get you. So this is what we're seeing in North Carolina already. Uh, 2024 Charger Daytona, that's MSRP 70,000. And then another Daytona 82, 70, 70. So off the rip, you're paying 70 plus thousand dollars for a 2024 Charger. No. Inline six, my ass, no, and that's just the inline six or the uh, the hurricane engine. We're not even talking about the SRT, Banshee, Daytona, all electrified. If the baseline, as we know right now, is set at seventy thousand, what do you think the SRT Daytona is going to come out at? Easily ninety to a hundred. No way. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? No way. No way. No. No. No way, Jose. You know what I'm saying? So. In my opinion, and I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how Dodge is going to play it. But I think that these 2024s and 2025s are pretty much already built and set to be delivered. Like, there's no turning back now. Like, we're not going to see a Hemi in the next 365 days. We're not going to see a Hellcat or a Hellcat successor in the next 365 days. I do believe the Hemi will make a return sooner rather than later. I do believe a Hellcat successor will make a return um, as well. Only because nobody else is following Dodger steps. Ford has already doubled down on the V8 and stated that, listen, we will be the only remaining dealership or the only remaining brand that makes V8s and puts them in pony cars. You know what I mean? He's already down. Uh, he's already, you know, doubled down on that. That they will be the last brand, if that's the case, the last manufacturer in America making V8s. So they've already doubled down on that. The Ford Mustang will always have a V8 in it at some point, somehow. You know, Chevy just dropped the 2020 what four 2025 Chevy uh, Corvette ZR1. It is ZR1, right? Hold on, hold on. 20, 25. Is it 2025 Chevy? Or is it 2024? It's 2025. 2025 5.5 liter V8 engine that's putting down 1,064 horsepower. A twin turbo V8. So they not only double down on the V8, they put two turbos on top of it. Twin turbo V8 on top of it for 2025. 
and all Dodge has for that is an electric SRT Banshee bullshit, they've got to come back to the market with something stronger than that simply because just the history of Dodge. I mean, the Charger, the Challenger, the Viper, SRT brand, Hellcat brand, they've got to come back to it somehow or another. Otherwise, they're just going to get washed off the table. And before you know it, Dodge, is, is, Dodge probably won't even exist by the end of 25 if they keep it up this way and they don't give their customers some sort of hope. Like, we don't want inline six engines. We don't want hurricane engines. We certainly don't want electrified, you know, chargers. We don't want that shit, you know? And I knew, I'm pretty sure that this new regime that comes in, this new leadership, new CEO uh, leadership of, of Stellantis and of Dodge, uh, that coupled with the fact that we're going to have a new president, I think that we will be seeing a V8 maybe as early as 26, you know? 2025, like I said, these cars have already been created and they're set to be delivered. We're going to see 2025 Dodge Chargers that are electric on dealership lots, simple and plain. You know, just get used to it. Just accept that fact. 2025 is a wash, you know, as far as I'm concerned. 2024 as well. 24 and 25 is a wash. We're not going to see anything that we're particularly interested in. But 26, 27 and so on and so forth over the next five years. I think that Dodge will make a comeback somehow, some way with the V8 engine, if not something bigger. If they bring the Viper back, it's game over. You know what I'm saying? Because Viper right now, head to head with the Corvette ZR1, 1,000 horsepower Corvette ZR1, that would be a good match. I would love to see that. You know, I would love to see Dodge come out with something wild as it pertains to the Viper. You know, drop a V10, V12 engine in there. Drop a supercharged, you know, future Hellcat engine. I don't know what they could engineer, you know. Drop something in it that's big as hell. Pauls, big engine, right, with a lot of power. Make it small, make it light, make agile, low to the ground, like they make all Vipers in the past. And bring back SRT, you know, keep the SRT brand. Keep the SRT brand uh, true to the V8. And then before you know it, Dodge is right back in the race. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it doesn't, it's not rocket science here. It's not one of those things where it takes years of R&D and, and millions of dollars of, you know, uh, uh, research and development. Like, I, I, it's not that hard. People just want big engines, big power, simple. You know what I'm saying? Your interior doesn't have to look like an AMG. You know, you don't have to offer carbon fiber, everything all over the place and make it stupid expensive. That defeats the purpose. People want... Nice looking, powerful, fast, reliable V8s or V10s or V12s, whatever you want to drop in there, you know, um, for a reasonable price, affordable price. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, it just doesn't seem right that Ford and Chevy are out here putting out monster automobiles. I mean, Ford just came out with the, the Shelby Super Snake. Now, I know that's not coming directly from Ford. I think that's like a specialty build, but 800 horsepower, big V8 engine. And then they've got the, uh, what is that, GTD, uh, Ford Mustang as well. What is that, uh, twin turbo V8, 800 plus horsepower. And then Chevy's coming out with the ZR1, 1,000 plus horsepower. And Dodge has no answer. Ram has no answer. The Raptor R is out, and it's going to continue to come out. And all Ram can offer is the RHO, 500 horsepower, twin turbo. Hell no. That's trash. Nobody wants that. Nobody's buying that. I can guarantee you, if you put a 2024 or 2025 Ram RHO next to a used 23 TRX, everybody's taking a TRX. Nobody wants the RHO, straight up and down. So, I mean, I truly believe that we will see a V8 in the future. Um, like I said, probably not in 25 because 25 is pretty much, you know, the writing's already on the wall for that. Like, uh, it's just, we've just come too far. Um, but things are definitely going to be shaken up. You know what I'm saying? For Dodge. Um in the future, in 26 and after that. We're not gonna see that box on wheels with powered by the uh, electric motor. We're not gonna see that too much longer. I give that about a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe because of how many you know, options they built and so on and so forth. They've gotta sell them, they can't just trash them. But we're gonna see something pretty soon. Like Dodge is gonna uh, have to do a, a complete you know, turnaround, a overhaul from top to bottom. Prices as well. Prices are going to have to be overhauled as well. And then, of course, getting down to the performance of it all. 
But a lot of things are uh, in the future can work out for Dodge. It's just, it's going to take some time. 2025, I really believe, is going to be a wash. Probably going to be one of the worst years on record for Dodge as far as selling, you know, the new Charger and shit like that. Because I personally know dealerships that don't even want to order the new 2024, 2025 Charger. They don't want it on a lot because they know that with any first generation car that you're putting out there, especially when you get into the experimental electric market, something that you've never touched in the past, there's going to be issues. There's going to be growing pains. There's going to be recalls. And before you know it, these Dodge dealerships are going to look like junkyards because it's just going to be 24, 25 Charger and Chal Charger lined up, inline six hurricane engine next to the SRT Daytona. Something's broken. Something's manu you know malfunctioning. It's going to be a parking lot full of broke down cars. So a lot of dealerships don't even want to order 2024, 2025 Chargers, especially when they're having trouble moving 23s and 24s that are already on the lot. So a lot of dealerships are not even asking for these cars to be delivered. So in my honest opinion, I think 25 is a wash. Like whatever comes out is whatever comes out. There's nothing we can do about it. But the future, however, 26, 27 and so on and so forth should look like something that we're used to. V8s, the Viper. Everybody's been talking about the Viper. I would love for the Viper to come back. The Hemi, the Hellcat, Charger and Challenger, maybe even a Cuda. The T-Rex, bring the fucking T-Rex back. Excuse my language. Bring the T-Rex back. I mean, there's no reason to get rid of that, you know? Uh, bring the Durango back. Bring the Trackhawk back. I have no idea why they got rid of the Trackhawk so soon. That made no sense whatsoever. I've never seen a Trackhawk that had trouble being sold. Those Trackhawks, they hit the lot on a Monday. They're gone by Thursday. Like, those, those Jeeps used to move. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day... Um, in the short term, we're losing a lot of people. A lot of people are being fired. A lot of people are being let go. A lot of people are stepping down just because of the leadership or lack thereof from the top down. But the reality of the situation is I think that this may be shaping up for a bright future or no future at all. Because if Dodge doesn't you know, change some things from top to bottom, there won't be a Dodge. You know what I mean? It'll be Chrysler. Chrysler only has the Pacifica at this point. They're not selling anything else. No more 300s, no more 200s, nothing else. That's all they got is the Pacifica, and that will be what Dodge is. They'll, Dodge will have nothing but the Durango. The Hornet's not selling. Nobody's buying Hornets. That's why Hornets are damn near $10,000 off, and they're already relatively cheap cars because nobody's buying them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so the Hornet's not going to last. This new Charger that's coming out, that's not going to last. So they got to do something. Either do something or do nothing and just watch the brand, you know, die, unfortunately. But, you know, they uh, ultimately with this video, man, the, the CEO of Stellantis has retired. He or is stepping down. Uh, we've already lost the Dodge CEO, you know, Tim Kaninskis, the godfather of the Hellcat. He's gone. So from the top down, we're losing a lot of people, which could turn out to be a good thing in the future. So talk to you, boy. Like, subscribe, comment. It's been your boy, Knockout360, man. I'm going to get out of here, man. Peace.